I have always been a Microsoft web application person because there are features that only existed in the web that I rely on for my day-to-day -day work. Now recently, Microsoft has been doing a lot of work to bring feature parity between what exists in the Outlook web and the Outlook desktop application. So today we're going to look at a few of the features that are now available in both. If you would like to follow along with this demonstration, please see the link in the description below for Outlook download instructions. Now the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the ability to pin messages in the Outlook desktop app. Now for the longest time, we have had the ability to select a message and then flag it. Now, what this would do is it's going to keep the flagged message in the order in which it was received. As new messages come in, the flagged items will be pushed down the list. When you pin a message, it's going to move to the top of your inbox and it will stay there until you unpin it. So this is a helpful way to keep important messages at the top of mind so you don't lose track of them. The next thing that made its way to the Outlook desktop application is scheduling polls. To view it, you need to click on a new message and then add at least one person to the message and a subject line. With this minimum criteria added, the scheduling poll button becomes active on the messages tab. Now I'm gonna briefly go over this because I have a full video on scheduling polls that I will link in the description. You can create a poll to suggest one or more meeting times for you and the people whose name or names were added to the two or CC lines. As the creator of the poll, you can select multiple times and even choose multiple days. When you're done, click on the next button in the lower right hand corner. You will see your selected times and the option to manage your poll settings. Click create poll to finish the process. Now you can see a little poll card has been added to your Outlook message. Craft your message like you normally would, and when you're done, send the email. The people receiving the poll will be able to vote on the time that works best for them. If the poll reaches a consensus, it will automatically schedule the meeting. Another difference for the Outlook desktop application is the layout. It looks more like the web app does now, and so some of the buttons have moved around. For example, we used to find settings by clicking on a file tab on the top left of the screen. As you can see, it is no longer there. You can find settings in one of two places. Go to the view tab and settings is the first icon on the ribbon. Or you can go to the upper right hand corner of the screen and click on the gear icon. This will take you to the same place, so it's a matter of which one you prefer. One thing to be aware of is that the settings available in the new Outlook are different than what we are used to, and many of the advanced options are not available. But let's look at a couple of the ones that people use often. I'm going to click on the Appearance tab under the General Settings. From here, you can change from Light to Dark Mode and change the theme associated with your Outlook. The theme choices will depend on what your organization enables. Under the mail settings, I like to go to the customize actions options and choose what surfaces on my email. One thing I have noticed is when the new Outlook desktop app was launched, many of the choices we used to have are no longer available in both the web and desktop versions. I do hope that Microsoft brings back some of the choices. Next on our list of Outlook desktop improvements is the My Day to and To Do options. Some of you may be saying, we could get to To Do before, and that is true, but the button really just took you to the login page of To Do. My Day keeps you in Outlook without needing to jump around to other applications. In the upper right-hand corner, you will see the My Day button. Click on that and a pane will open from the right side of the screen. By default, you will see the My Day view that shows you a quick view of your Outlook calendar. From here, you can add additional events or tasks. The next tab over is To Do. This will show you a list of tasks. Admittedly, it is a quick overview of what you have to do. In this example, I forgot to mark a task as complete and it now shows as overdue. Since I did complete the task, I can quickly clean up the list and check it off. If you need to see the full details found in the To Do app, 
go to the bottom right corner and click Manage All Tasks. The last feature we're going to look at is Schedule Send. To get started, click on New Email. Craft the email as you normally would. Instead of clicking Send, notice that there's now a drop-down arrow on the Send button. Click the arrow and you will see the Schedule Send option in the little menu. A floating dialog box will appear. There are two standard choices or you can click Custom Time. I almost always use Custom Time because it provides more flexibility. When you click that, you now have a calendar to choose any date and time appropriate to your business process. In this example, the colleague I want to send a message to will not be in the office until Tuesday morning. This feature is a great way to create your message at a time that makes sense to you, but also does not send messages when people are out of the office or outside of work hours. So now that we have looked at these five updates, tell me in the comments which one you will use the most.